Japan. Yes. So, is another way of talking about justice as contemplating the logos? Or is that too much of a stretch? No, no, that's how you would finally get in touch with the logos. Contemplating justice, that's what he's saying. Because again, we're getting into a model copy. Yes. And switching your focus to the model. That's right. And letting that pervade everything. That's right. Is essentially no. expressing justice. Yeah. And the knowledge that you need, the knowledge that will allow you to maintain that. That's the way he defines justice. You need a knowledge that will maintain that state and he calls that wisdom. And a, another name for this, call it, right? Expressed in the expressed in a variety of ways that also can be called wisdom. Now let's see how our colleague is doing with the second sentence. Oh, the second sentence. That was uh, is that sufficient for the first? Well, you took it in a much different way than I expected, which was to turn to the dialogue itself. And I'm glad that I asked and you took it the way you did, because that's much more delicious. Yeah. The way we went. yeah. So especially for my, the second sentence I'm, I'm good with, because it basically says you're not going to do something. Uh, before we discuss this idea and others, we will not offer an explanation of why this fundamental error has been ignored repeatedly throughout the European tradition of philosophy, because we would rather leave that to you. Thank you. That's what I want to do. What do you make of this if the, if the case can be made that there is a genuine betrayal? Go ahead. I would like to think there's not a big conspiracy, but it's, it's done because maybe they didn't see it. But let us assume you've seen it. What follows? Uh, it's, it needs more clarification and no one's really gotten it yet. What follows? If they saw it and ignored it? What follows if the idea of the betrayal can be, can be maintained and justified? What would follow? How do you explain it? See, that's what's required. How do you explain it if it's there to be seen? Ask, 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 ask why. I'm, I'm yeah, uh, two things in my mind. I got two things in my mind. Go ahead, I'll take both. So it was, was the other one. I just lost it. Oh. Yeah. Do you know anybody who did the translation? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Is it possible you might ask him the very question that we're laboring over? And I understand your mother keeps her finger in the pot as well. Go, yeah, go ahead. Fair enough. That would define a sick society. That's secret. Sick. Well, it seems like it, it's completely incommensurate with their vision of reality, the idea of self. They, there's, no, there's no way they can uh, reflect it in a translation without their whole worldview, cultural worldview, completely changing. Self view, worldview. Mm. And so it's like you have this, what they call an elephant in the room, in a way. You have this huge, beautiful, high concept, and they can't look at it because 
to even consider it even a little bit would be to completely overturn all of the concepts they live with. Um, no. Right? It's not empirical, right? And so it's not nominalistic, as you called it, no. right? It's, you can't, it's not, redu it's not redu reducible, or in one sense, by ignoring it, maybe that's a form of erasure, you know, form of taking it out. But um, I, we, were, we were talking about this, was it yesterday? In the, in the Parmenides group that, um, that languages have inherent within their grammatic, syntax, vocabulary, a world view. And um, that the concept is that if you can put it in your language, yeah, there'll be some loss, but not anything major. And it seems like the, these people couldn't even step a little bit into the realm of self, right? I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm, that's my best shot at it. I, oh, see. The question might be put this way. Uh, suppose someone were to argue that this is such an esoteric work. No one in the old days really did anything with it. It was, pre it was preserved out of some ancient tradition that they thought it worthwhile to recopy at innumerable times so that it comes to us in the present. But no one in that age ever spent any time dealing with these ideas. Or if they did it with such a small group of people, we can ignore them. <coughs> no. This is not, if this is a small group, it's the, like the pinnacle of philosophy group. It's small indeed, but certainly not to be disregarded. And, and to make it even, and to make it even more of a dilemma, the first definition of auto is self. So yes. to ignore or to not even consider translating it or consider it is a problem that they are ignoring. It's, an, it's obvious, but it, see. you can't see it. See. Like my Here's the question, OK? <laughs> Let's assume it. Why is it that there were these very curious people called early Greeks that were able to talk about these ideas with one another and we can't? We can't, we don't, we refuse to, one way or the other. What was it about their culture that allowed that facility of using these terms meaningfully? One thing, Hellenistic mysteries. Hey, at one time, according to the literature, 3,000 people could attend it. They spent six months before entering into the Ellicinian Mysteries in preparation for the acid trip. Hey, Athens at that time was said to have a population of 40,000 people. That's close to one-tenth of the population. Each year, 3,000 would come in, right? Or four, every four years. Therefore, everybody, everybody, a large number of the people then were all on acid. <laughs> now, isn't that a good group to talk to? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, what has happened to our culture with the introduction of acid? Hard summer. And now that we have the internet, then this kind of language is becoming more available. Mm -hmm. Especially the fact that our culture is now looking into pharmaceuticals and looking for these kinds of psychedelics that might possibly be an aid to this or that disease or this and that psychiatric need. But we are gonna look at it and say, <clears throat> I'd rather go for the trip. <laughs> so, as, as you've said before, the entire platonic system can be unpacked or can emerge out of two components. Mm -hmm. The experience of beholding the light of yeah. me 
and it's contemplation through the mind. Mm -hmm. So in order for a society to lose that, reject it, betray it, one or the other, or both, mm -hmm. has to be discarded. Yeah. So which was it? Was it both? Was it yeah, one? likely. An equal balance. Yeah, could be both. But that does mean there's a vitality to it that's being derived from that class of experience. Then there has to be people around who help them and understand it. See, we don't have any information, a description of it, and all the thousand years in which it was functioning. The closest that comes to it is one description from Cicero. But Apart from that, there's very little direct knowledge of anyone reporting on the Eleusinian mysteries. Now we have all kinds of archaeological work and they test this, that, and the other thing to determine what mixture they used. And it turns out to be the air god off barley and that in, in, in essence is a, a natural source of LSG. Now don't go out in the fields and look for air god. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, see, but is this, is it likely that this article will be ignored? If not attacked. Yes. Or quoted without reference. Nope. It can't be ignored. Can't know it. Cannot be ignored. Can't. How do you see it? Because? Why? <laughs> Because someone is saying there is a fundamental betrayal in terms of scholarship that has to be addressed. That's all. Has to be. Tell me just one thing. What would follow if someone were to say, I think the article is pointing in the right direction. Let's go that way. What will happen to philosophy in the university philosophy departments? It's over. The young people were full vote. Oh. Ideally. Yeah. What would you say, David? Um, there would need to be uh, a new way of looking at thought and language and the assumptions we make and, and the culture we have that interprets uh, that kind of tradition in anachronistic ways and we're going to have to purify our language and thought and take all those terms and put them into one discussion at one time. The good, the idea of the good, the intelligible. Uh, the soul, the logos, yeah. and that discussion is going to have to happen. Has to happen. In relation to the self. That's right. And often. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. That's all. In this uh, republic, the, uh, the divided line, there's a kind of, uh, two kinds of reason, except that we have the belief mm -hmm. in the pictures, and then you have uh, understanding and knowledge. And uh, the people who are doing these things called philosophy these days have made some assumptions with their belief, and they try to pull us into thinking that they're reasoning. This is kind of like the idea of having uh, it's in geometry, for example, like they point out. So that you start with a thing that's an assumption, and everybody buys it, and then you try to prove it. That's right. And so they come up with an idea, and they try to prove it in your, your dialogue, rather than the other way around, which is to take a hypothesis and not be stuck with it. It's a, it doesn't work. So see what you have. See what you're doing. Yeah. So I, I don't know what the heck it's yeah. It's going to require a demonstration. Yeah. Oh, yeah? That's you right. That it presupposes a yeah. demonstration model. Oh, yeah, now, know. what's fun about this dialogue all right, is that behind this dialogue is a hidden thesis, which is, you see, Socrates meet Jesus and they consider what they've left behind. And that's the cause of all the problems because neither of them put in writing their own thoughts. 
and left it to other people to interpret. So behind this book is identifying different kinds of interpretation. It's really a work on how to understand hermeneutics, the art of interpretation. This work is holding the position that there are only a finite number of ways of interpreting. Therefore, what would follow? You could use that approach and look at Platonic scholarship and say whether or not all the commentaries on Plato can fit that paradigm of a finite number of ways of interpreting. But what would follow if that's the case? You have to do a lot more homework. Everybody. A new kind of homework. That's also a demonstration of understanding, wouldn't it be? Yes, it would. Yes, in say more. Of, in terms of uh, di diagnosing what took place through uh, right, these, these modes of interpreting. Oh. Either the book will come up with no interpretation is worthwhile, that is to say it has in principle a self-defeating proposition behind it, or it can reach a true interpretation, then it was not an interpretation. <coughs> it would be understanding. So this work brings up the idea that understanding is something to achieve in principle different from the game of interpreting. Yeah, so let, let me take your point. Uh, <clears throat> are you familiar with uh, our local culture? I went to the fair today. Totally. Uh, hey. Oh, oh. Uh, I think David is too. Um, with local culture, you know. Yeah, like what will this thesis do that is the primary worthwhile object of all studies is the self? Would that be something that the people across the street from Newport High School would enjoy reading and discussing? Uh, no, that's, they usually go on crusades and kill a lot of people when that kind of thinking comes up. <laughs> oh, that's rather curious. But, you, th you think some Christians might find this disturbing? I just wonder what it means for us to admit, let's say it's not, a, it's not an intentional or out of ignorance, neither. It wasn't intentional betrayal, it wasn't out of ignorance. But let's just say it's true. Mm -hmm. And that we're deceived. And that we have been deceived. And we, we exist in a state of deception then it's sort of, we're, we're maintaining a failure to regain a fundamental insight. Mm -hmm. And in, 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 in the face of this betrayal, what, how do we make a stand? You said it was a demonstration. It no. requires a demonstration like that. No. I think that the failure of man to regain his fundamental insight is based on the fact that there are not enough people making that kind of demonstration. Right. And it needs to be clarified. Anyways, that's a thought. And it's cheap. No, and it's, it's cheap. not. Mm -hmm. Well, the journey most is of my not life. It may take effort, but it's all available. Yeah, yeah I have extra copies, by the way. <laughs> 
But I, I like the idea that it's either ignored or uh, in ignorance. And I see that if it's ignored, that's a function of the self to do something. If it's out of ignorance, then it means that we have not been, we, we haven't been given the model to see it. But if we're deceived, that's a passive role for us, like something else is doing that against us. And I don't, I see that people, when we look at our problems, we see what's there, we ignore it though, because of beliefs that come in. Sure. So we're not, we're not deceived, we just, if you want to call it belief, belief, a, a deception. It's, it, it, we're not passive to it. I don't see we're passive, or I'm not passive. We ignore it, okay. and that's something active. Well, I, it, it's beginning to look to me like the interpretation you were discussing, and the fact that you can't get a position, in, for example, in a philosophy department, without buying into the particular interpretation in general. Maybe not in your case. Without, without buying into a certain interpretation, right? And I was thinking that it's much like another concept that you've put forth, which is that um, it's the acceptance of a role in order to be included within the family, right? So you have to accept this interpretation. There was, there's a moment, you may or may not be a moment of truth, but you have to accept the interpretation which excludes the logos, and you have to live that out, and you get your job through that, and it's a so it's so the whole tradition is a book religion, right? I, we were talking about the other concept you have of a book religion, that this way of being betrayed, using out, ignoring altars, is a tradition that maybe couldn't exist on Mars. You know, on Mars they would have the Greek, and they would translate it. But here on the earth, where there, we have the tradition of book religions that blind us, we have the blindness to Altos in Platonic tradition. Yeah, I think uh, it's worth knowing that Barbara did a nice word search in, uh, on the word self. And it only appears, you know, just a sh small number of times in the Parmenides, uh, 400. Is this is not a small number? <laughs> <laughs> like it permeates the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, one more step. Sir? Yes. The next sentence. Oh, here. I have to on. We will outline our case with a review of the sixth book of Plato's Republic and his dialogue, Parmenides. What is this? What does it say about the Republic? Good heavens! That's the next sentence. Funny you ask. It's most appropriate to begin with the sixth book of Plato's Republic because this is where he discusses the nature and goals of the philosopher, and it is here that he introduces the idea of self or auto. No. That's what you wrote. <laughs> is there any feed note? Actually, it says. 484 B7. I never found that. Yeah, number two. You <laughs> did Keep reading. What happens? Let us turn to where Socrates discusses the greatest learning of the good and the idea of the good. In this passage, Socrates indicates he is reluctant to explain the good to Glaucon and offers to discuss his alternative, the idea of the good, which the good begat. Glaucon responds that he expects to later hear about the Father, the Good. Socrates says, Let us dismiss for now inquiring what in the world the Good Self is, using esteem for is, at 506d8, and offer, offers the great study of the idea of the Good as the, the idea of the Good as the means to put to use justice and the other virtues. He adds, we do not sufficiently know herself, but if we do not know herself, 
then without the knowledge of herself, even if we knew everything else in the highest degree, you know that it would be of no benefit of us, just as it would bring us nothing, even though we possess anything whatever without the possession of the good. Bible 5a4. Here we have a contrast between the self, herself, and the good, and we must learn what that means. It's up to you. Go ahead. As Socrates continues, he goes on to say, There are great and manifold main disputes about the self, 505b3, and gives his view in the case of the in the case of just and beautiful selves, the many will choose the apparent, even though they are not so, whether in actions or acquisitions or opinions. But yet on the other hand, when it comes to good selves, no one is satisfied to acquire those that are apparent, but in selves they seek the true ones, for in these everyone immediately despises the apparent. It looks like the use of the self appears in those quotes. Frequently. Frequently. Yes. Hmm. Look here, let's try this. Wouldn't you be interested in knowing what's going to happen when our colleague, who's now teaching at Golden West College in the philosophy department, <laughs> may introduce this very notion about the Republic or about the or etc., dealing with the notion of the self? Wouldn't we want to know what effect it has? Yeah. Definitely. Or just let him read this paper. <laughs> That's, yeah. I'll take him through it and then I'll drop the paper. And I'll all right. See <laughs> what? You say you're going to make us grade all those papers? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That reminds me of a uh, curious story. Uh, There was an assignment in one of the classes that I took way back when. The assignment was to write a paper on the Dia Negativa, right? one of the first hypotheses. And the student had the audacity to show, give up, take the paper and hand it to the instructor and there was nothing on it. So the instructor looked at it, shook it a bit, and said, now it's finished. Mm. He wrinkled it a bit, see? Had to show that there was some work. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled that on Alan Watts way back when. <laughs> That's what he did. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, we need, come on, we need to get this guy to work, don't we? <laughs> He's getting close. Go ahead. We're going to what? Keep going. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> I got enough homework. Yes, there are many cells. But are they members of a higher class, the self? Is this self the same as the one? Can we call the self by the name of one self? Does the self disperse itself to bring onto existence the many selves? If so, it is functioning as a regional genitor and to turn to her self. Consider, he reflects on this very <coughs> point when he says, we must distinguish this point from the vantage point of the Logos, saying, surely then, we have spoken about the beautiful self and the good self, and the same way 
about all selves, which at the same time we consider as many. Now again, we shall in turn consider them according to one idea. Interestingly, he advances the idea about the, the origin of the intellect, saying that when the soul firmly resides in that place in which truth and real being brightly shine, then the soul comprehends and recognizes the self, and it comes to light that the soul possesses intellect. Socrates then contrasts the cause of knowledge and of truth being beautiful when he says, but when you are led to think that the self is another and still even more beautiful than these, you are being led to think This is Socrates' problem, right from that quote. If there are classes, like is there a class, say, of uh, trees? Is, there not, is it not true that there then is a diversity of different kinds of trees, which you can then discover here and there? Is that not true for all things? They fit into classes. And for each class, there's specific number, members for each class. If that's true, is the I watch the word, is this notion, is it a class? Is it, is it, does it fit into the idea of classes and that we are all particular members of it? Does the same logic for this apply to this? If so, then that self, which then is said to generate or be responsible for the many selves, can be called the true self. Or it can be called the great self. or the symbolic self, whatever you want to talk about it. Now look here, is that true? This is the one many problem. So Socrates says, hey, you know what? Self, itself, themselves, herself, himself. I mean, these words float all through our language. We use them all the time. Is there any logic to them? Do they fit this structure? How would you determine it? Only one way. You either decide to know the self or you don't. If you do, you can see whether or not it's true. What a weird question. He says, hey, this question I am puzzled about. Hey, hey this puzzles me. See? So that's why he asks Parmenides, hey, would you uh, uh, mind uh, telling us about your hypothesis of the self? Your self, or the self. So Parmenides said, well, you know, it's a hell of a trip. Glad you're a good group, right? I recognize this group is a worthy group, heavy into philosophy, therefore I'll risk it. But this is the problem. of which the Parmenides is a solution. But that solution is argumentative. It requires sin. So therefore, it's rather simple, right? Well, 
Xenophon, or pardon me, Xenophanes was Parmenides' teacher. He started it. He said, hey, after all, what is it that's seeing, hearing, and thinking? All three. Because there's something that's doing that. And it, it, you have to consider the whole. Well, the commentaries that existed at the time added their idea, and some put in the word mind for that and others put other names in it. But that's, that's the koan. H hundreds of years before the Buddhists came across it. So it's very simple. But just hold on to it. And whatever you do. You're doing it. Right. By the way, what does it do for bicycle riding? <laughs> I can totally recommend it for surfing. It works really well when you're there. See? And what you should do is come around and make sure you take a look at David's new bicycle. Oh, forget the bicycle. <laughs> Bicycle's dangerous, by the way. <laughs> I was watching him run down the street with his bicycle. That's what I mean, it's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it's an electric, electric model. Yeah. So, you know what you're going to get? You're going to get the dialogue tomorrow that accompanies this. It needs a bit of work, but uh, that's normal. But it will be available to you, and we'll play the game tomorrow. Fair enough? Yes. All right. Thank you. Which one? The blue one. It's, this is the hard, this is a uh, publication one. It'll be out. This is just a proof copy. So it'll be another week, and then I'll, they have to make a bunch of corrections. Ah, now it's time for a cup of coffee for me. Working all this time without a cup <laughs> is not good for the soul. No. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah.